So today I'd like to talk a little bit advanced chip and trick, not like super basic. Be aware of the vessel tapering. So let's talk this case. You see the super diffuse LED region and there is a lot of lunch. And you have almost no idea what the vessel size because of the super diffuse disease. But there is a very clear rule. So let's show the IBIS in each segment. And I measure the vessel diameter. So let's start from the very proximal. This is a very proximal LED and I measure the media to media is 4.9. After this big diag, I measure here is 4.1. After the second big diag, I measure here 3.4. After the third big diag, I measure 3.0. And without big branch, the vessel diameter is similar. So now you can recognize, even geographically looks quite diffuse disease, but really how vessel tapering was determined by the side branch, taper, uh, side branch location. So whenever you see the big branch, you should recognize how the cell diameter will be changed very consistent way. And this is a very old paper describing how it looks like the vessel tapering. And vessel tapering is the most in the LED. And typically, if you go to 10 millimeter, it's 0.33. But circumflex light coronary is about half. That's really where we see. So if you implant stent, and let's say the proximal LED, you put the four, and if you put 30 millimeter stent in that 30 millimeter distal segment should be three or. So those are the very basic, and many times we are not sure by angio. But one thing we should recognize is this is a different case. You can see the very diffuse disease, and I see the big diag and second diag. And then I see similar concept, which I show in the first case. But one surprise of this case was there is a big calcium, but afterwards there is a mass bridge. And always inside of the bridge is normal, and you see the very dark, that's a bridge. And we analyze the bridge in the consecutive cases. The prevalence of the bridge is 25% of the LED. Therefore, this is not infrequent. So whenever you see the diffuse LED region, you should keep in your mind you may have the bridge at the end of the region. So that you should not cover because that's most likely causing the dystenosis. The second, if you want to predict how good stent expansion in the calcified region, I really recommend you should imagine how it looks like the total volume of the calcium in that region. And we developed the calcium score. So the first we look into the angio because angiographic appearance help us. If angiographic calcium is yes, we measure the calcium angle at the site of the maximum. That's if that is more than 270, we measure calcium score. So the components of the calcium score is if the angle is more than 270 is longer than five millimeter, indicating the very diffuse long calcified region, 0.1. And if you see the circumferential calcium, that's very different compared to let's say 330 degree the calcium. The reason is if you have the non-calcium circumference, that's making the good dissection. That's very different compared to the circumferential calcium. If so, 0.1. And the calcified nodule is really the indication of the big chunk of the calcium behind. And you have to remember if that is there, that's going to be 0.1. And finally, the vessel diameter is very important. Even the calcified region go there and you can measure the vessel diameter that's help us. And if you start from the small vessel, you have less chance to expand better. Therefore, all together, that's indicating the good stent expansion. So we developed that score in the test cohort and we validate in the separate validation cohort. And if you see the big calcium score, you have the full expansion. But if you do that electomy, even the high score is a good stent expansion. Additionally, we picking up the no angiographic calcium cohort, but all of them having the IBAS calcium is more than 270. None of them having the score four and even the high score, they are good expansion. Why? Because that's indicating the same calcium. That is the reason why we couldn't see by angio. So it's important to imagine how big the calcium is really, you have to look into the how circumference 
and how long. And angiographic appearance is also important. And there is a very clear interaction between the calcium score and the directory usage. And if the score is more than two, most likely we can get the better stent expansion if you do the something else. What is important for the prediction for the confirmation is really look for the calcium fracture. And this is how looks at the calcium fracture by IBUS and how you can identify, you, you look for the behind, meaning if there is a calcium, you couldn't see the behind. But if there is a calcium fracture, that's indicating already the calcium was separate. And then you should see the behind. That's, you know, that's a fracture. And if you have the fracture, because of the fracture site making a good strength of the uh, vessel and then making the good stent expansion. Confirmation of the fracture before stent in the severe calcium region is very important. You are secure of the good stent expansion. And I just want to show one case what's happening. And this is a very severe LED. And you can see the uh, vessel diameter of the by IBUS is 4.5. And the operator performed the predilatation using the relatively small balloon compared to the vessel size. And after the balloon, what you see is this portion was looks like new stenosis and what's happening. This is really so-called intramural hematoma. And once uh, region segment was balloon at the edge, media dissection, because of those segment was relatively normal and they extend very easily this study and making the closed space without the entry site and blood going to be here and making the hematoma and pushing to the lumen. That's really the mechanism of the hematoma. And once you have this type of the hematoma similar to the scat, you should consider stent by covering the entire segment. Otherwise, this hematoma is pushing this study. So this case is very instructive by our picture. You see the entry side and the medial dissection extended longitudinally. This is closed space without the entry side. And this is very typical IVAS hematoma. You see the hyper intensity helmet shape that's pushing to the lumen. That's really how it looks like the hematoma. The importance you have to look for what is the entry site and then how you're going to cover. This case after the stent at the site of the hematoma is really well, no more hematoma. Out osteo, that's very important. This case, you see the out osteo region and operator so, uh, by IBUS, we see the very clear uh, focal calcified stenosis. And operator put the stent angiographically and you see it looks okay. But when we see the IBUS, we are surprised actually region was completely missed and there is a no stent at the osteum of the region. And the operator put one more stent and osteo flush, and this is how it looks like. And this is very important if the region located at the osteum, even though geographically you thought it's covered, but sometimes it's not. And really important to confirm you cover the entire region after disengaging the guiding catheter. Additionally, this is also happened so-called stent deformation. This is a case which having the um, uh, region in the circumflex osteum to the left domain, and because this is protected already, and we put the stent from the circumflex to the left domain. There is only one stent, but at the osteum of the left domain, you see the double ray of the stent, even only one stent. This is really stent deformation, and that you have to recognize. This is not, again, their phenomena. In the Excel trial, we see 6.5% of the stent deformation, which correlate with the outcome. Because you, if you don't recognize, because inside of the stent area is smaller than original because it's deformed. And also, sometimes you may miss the region because stent is shorter compared to the original length. So recognition and additional treatment is quite important. How you identify the side blanche variation? This is a case, and we are in the LED, and we look for the circumflex osteum. And I saw this is okay, looks like clean. However, it is not. And when we look into the circumflex directory, we see the chunk of the disease. And what is important to evaluate the side blanche from the main blanche, you have to remember, this is very poor specificity, meaning if you don't see any region, that does not mean no region. So in such, you have to check the 
circumflex directory. But the other way, if you see something that's most likely to do, that's disease. And finally, I just want to say something in terms of the artifact. And this is very typical artifact, so-called NERD. So it's very familiar and you understand this is not correct measurement, that's fine. But how about this case? This is also the protected left domain. And after the stenting into the left domain, we measure this. And I saw this is a little bit distorted picture, not clear NERD, but very distorted picture. And then we ask the operator, please disengage in the guide and then making more coaxial taking divers. And then we did this picture. And compared to this picture, you understand how outside is more, cons uh, more uh, smooth picture. And actually the stent area is very different. And this is real number. So if you have distorted picture, not even not very clear not, you have to recognize that may not be correct measurement. So disengaging the, the guide and then checking the host team is very important. So that's all what I would like to show for the advanced IBAS chip and trick. Thank you so much.